going to talk you through some top tips for drawing graphs and we're going to start with what I think is one of the most difficult graph types. So the scientist Richard Dole collected data about the deaths from cancer in the 1950s. The table shows data for four groups. Plot a bar chart to show the number of deaths from lung cancer and from other cancers for each of the four groups. So we're looking at lung cancers and other cancers for each of the four groups. Then in terms of what goes on your y-axis and your x-axis, your y-axis is what you're measuring. It's always the dependent variable. We need to go from 0 all the way up to 35. So pick a sensible scale here. I'm going to go up in tens. Remember, we need to occupy as much of the graph paper as possible. And then just use that table to help you with this label. So we're going to write number of deaths, no need for units this time. And then I think the x-axis is more difficult to pick through, but on the x-axis in this particular case, we want to mention whether it's non-smokers, light smokers, medium smokers, or heavy. So these first two thin bars, I'm going to assign non-smokers. Then I'm going to leave a gap and write light smokers. Another gap, medium smokers. And then another gap, then heavy smokers. So I'm going to write type of smoker here. And then for each category, we're going to need two bars, one for lung cancer and one for other cancers. So non-smokers, lung cancer was zero whereas other cancers was 15. And I'm going to use a key whereby my slashes represent other cancers and my blank represents lung cancer. Now we know for light smokers that 12 got lung cancer. Whereas 35 got other cancers. Draw this nice and accurately in the exam. My iPad's not lining up perfectly. Making sure that I'm representing my key correctly. Medium smokers, 11 got lung cancer versus 24 that got other cancers. So yeah, these graphs are more tricky, but I'm hoping that you'll feel more comfortable as to how you'd go about it watching this video. Now heavy smokers, 13 got lung cancer. And 18 got other cancers. I'm now going to show you how to draw a line graph. So that's for continuous data to show the number of light coloured moths and number of dark coloured moths from 92 to 98 using a ruler to join the points with straight lines. So this is a very typical example. Remember, as I've just said, your dependent variable, so what you measure, it is important that you know your variables in the exam, that will always go on your y-axis. Remember I said it's the numbers which are more difficult to plot. Look down them, these are difficult to plot, versus your independent variable, what you change, which in this case is the year, these numbers are easier to plot, so they'll go on your x-axis. Remember we want to occupy as much of that graph paper as possible. So that means picking a sensible scale. Let's just write down exactly as the table says here. Remember to include units. So if a unit mentioned like kg is mentioned in the table, include that in your graph. Now in terms of year, we're going from 92 to 98. It's worth writing those little lines to help you line it all up. Wonderful. I'm occupying lots and lots of my graph paper. And then... What's our lowest number? 1. Scan down. What's our highest number? 27. So I'm going to go 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I've occupied a large piece of my graph paper. It's up to you if you want to draw a key or just label each line. I'm just going to label each line. So I'm going to take this column first of all. So in 1992, I had nine light-coloured moths. In 1993, I had 11. Use little crosses to represent those dots. 94 was 11. 
95 was 5, 96 was 1, 97 was 8, 98 was 13. It says use a ruler to join the points with straight lines, so do follow those instructions. I'm going to label that light coloured moths. I'll just swap colour so you can see my next points nice and clearly. For dark coloured moths now, 27 for 1992, 18 for 93, 7 for 94, 1 for 95, 4 for 96, down to 1, and then up to 9. Join the dots again. And these are your dark coloured moths.